A recent article says that the CFA Institute has jacked up the executive compensation packages that they're paying. The main complaint seems to be that the Institute is doing this during the same period of time when the number of test takers generating revenue for the CFA Institute is down. We have all heard plenty of stories of companies giving huge raises and bonuses to their executives while laying off workforce and while profits are in the tank. So let's see if that's what the CFA Institute is doing here. The article on eFinancialCareers.com first cites that the number of test takers taking the level one exam is down about 35% from the pre-pandemic levels. And right away I went, well, that's to be expected. People are doing less things in general since the pandemic started. And then they cite Margaret Franklin, the CEO of the CFA Institute, cited the Chinese lockdowns for the reason that the total number of test takers is down right now. And from the Institute's perspective, that is another very valid point. But they say that an unnamed Institute insider had a different perspective to share. This insider said that the demand for the exams is falling off of a cliff, that the new generation do not want to study for an exam with such a low pass rate that no one cares about, and that the institute has not kept up with current learning practices. Yes, pass rates are down, that is a valid complaint. The institute has made mention of this, and I think they're probably working on it internally. To say that no one cares about the CFA program and its credential is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and then finally, I can't think of too many instances in which the CFA institute has not kept up with current learning practices. You could probably make a counter argument to this, but in general, I think more of the education industry is shifting to a model similar to what the CFA Institute uses, which is self-study, online learning, and credentialing exams. So the article says that with exam fees plummeting, they would expect the Institute to cut back on the notoriously generous staff pay, or at least wouldn't increase it at a rate that exceeds the current calculated rate of inflation. I mean, come on. Yeah, I get the point about not raising pay for executives when revenues are down, but it doesn't really matter what the inflation rate is when you're talking about raises to the leadership of a company. I don't know. It goes on to say that the CEO, Margaret Franklin, got a 23% pay raise when you include the fact that she got paid some uh, sign-on bonus just now for starting the role a few years ago, I believe, and that the COO of the Institute got a 60% pay raise now to $590,000 per year. I specifically made the point in the beginning of this video about other instances in which all of us have seen stories on executives getting their pay jacked up while the company is doing poorly. And the reason I want to encourage that comparison is because in 95 or 99% of those instances, usually the executive compensation's going from something like 20 million a year to 40 million a year or 80 million a year to 140 million a year in stock and bonus and all that. So to complain about the chief operating officer of a multinational organization now earning $590,000 a year just sounded silly to me when reading this. In fact, if I was that chief operating officer, I would be looking at my salary and going, wow, you know, there are many CFA charter holders, people coming through the program in which I administer, not the majority of which, but many of them that are earning well more than I am by practicing the information taught in the program that I administer. So maybe I should consider a career change. In the next section, the article mentions that 100 jobs were cut at the CFA Institute. I take that point the most seriously, I think. It does seem unfair and unjust to give any kind of a raise to any employees, executives included, when you had to cut people in the prior year. Now, unless that was a division that the Institute kind of parted ways with, maybe even spun off, I don't know for sure. But if it was just cutting salaried employees for the purpose of increasing profit margins, but you're still giving other people's raises, that seems a little questionable. We would need some more details there to know exactly if the decisions they made were unjust or unfair. The article concludes by quoting Margaret Franklin again. She says that she's confident demand for the exams will recover once the Chinese lockdowns are over and that in India, exam takers are already flooding back into exam halls, which is good news for the CFA Institute. But they say it could in fact be that the Gen Z test takers are now so scared by the recently low pass rates that they're just never gonna sign up for the CFA exams again, and the relevance of the program will kind of just go away with the wind. If it was the case that Gen Z became scared of the low pass rates and didn't take these exams, I can guarantee you the next generation coming up behind them, or even the kids three to five years younger than them, would go, oh, hey, great, there are hardly, hardly any new CFA charter holders. This is gonna give me an awesome opportunity to achieve this charter and then have a better chance at getting into a finance role that I want, which probably extremely values or requires the CFA designation, since my slightly older competition 
are less likely to have earned the charter themselves. My point there is that the value of the CFA charter, especially within the context of a finance career, is second to none and not going anywhere anytime soon. This is still the best way to give yourself a huge knowledge base about financial topics, the best way to improve your resume, the best way to get into the next job or the next level in your career. So people are still going to take these tests, I can assure you that. My opinion, you might be able to tell as to the executives getting these raises is that it's not a big deal, especially when you consider the amounts that they get paid, it's nothing crazy. And look, from a business perspective, if you really have exceptional employees, you probably have to be giving them raises to these standards that the Institute did with the CEO and COO because those people are very likely able to earn a much higher salary switching careers or switching jobs to a different position. You have to keep them happy and you need to give them those raises to keep them around. If it were the case that the Institute laid these 100 employees off because they were trying to increase margins and they were giving big raises to not competent executives and the CEO and COO here, then I think we'd have a problem on our hands. That would not be a just scenario. So let me know in the comments down below if anyone has the understanding that that is the case here. I don't believe it is, but I could be wrong. Most likely the scenario is that the author of this article was just a little bit salty because the pass rates were low and didn't like to see the executives getting any type of a raise. So they made this kind of a hit piece, pointing out that the number of test takers were down, but given the fact that there was a pandemic, that's to be expected. And like I said earlier, with that $590,000 annual compensation, I imagine there might be a handful of you watching this video who earn that much or more. And if you do, maybe send the COO of the CFA Institute a little note saying, hey, sorry for your poor financial situation. I can donate some cans of soup if you need any help. As always, if you like this video, please don't forget to press the like button and of course, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.